A very good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254 Maxwell Wasike is my name. Keep talking to us, hashtag Touchline Y254 at Wasike Maxwell at Y254 channel. Of course, this time round we're going to speak about a very interesting conversation regarding the welfare and interest of uh, footballers in the country. And uh, with me in the studio is the body mandated to represent and ably advocate for their interests. James Situma, I call him Chemo, captain himself, is joining us for the first time in several years down the line. Tango Omoke. A little two pack dog, but he's here. Glad he's joining us as long as I tell you, Oko, a good friend and now vice chairperson. Of course, both of them have sailed through this morning's elections after you know receiving no opponent. I don't know whether that one is attributed to their scorecard or something. How comes they never got to be you know competed against? Jemo, good to see you. How are you doing, man? I'm fine. You are keeping well. Yeah, uh, umeni geuzi ya lakini it's okay. No, you are, I'm so, the one who said wa Kiswahili eh, tangu wa moke. But sasa umeni tupa kwa mbuki. Suti imeni roka bro. Kumbu kwa president lazima. Na shukuru. Ah, mamba inaenda kibadilika. Lazima ukismama hapo na Ruto. Of yani course. ni kama president William eh, Ruto, tuna, president James Ruto. Tunaenda hapa kwa hapo. Nanojua pia also we have uh, so many members. So you have to be at par. Terry, mm -hmm. miaje. <laughs> Mifraya kukuona tena. Ukopoa? Yep. Yeah. In the past, you were a CEO, general secretary, or yeah. director of communications or something. I don't know which was <laughs> yeah, your title. Yeah. Yes. Director of communications. Now you're coming in as vice chairperson. How does this feel? How are you looking for transitioning into media duties to now administrative aspect? Actually, it's more or less the same thing. I'll just be the vice president in charge of communications. So, uh -huh. so it's not anything new, plus it is not... Actually, it's, it feels the same. It's yeah. still the same work, working for the players. James, you've, you've, you've been in the game for a while, a former player, you know, played for several teams locally, national team as well, captain, wearing that. Um, but that experience is, is, is up there now. Kefa, it is something that I've seen you taking higher after picking it from the grass. Now you seem to be visible, your activities. How has it been like? Yeah, it has been a quite a uh, journey, and you know, you know, uh, from playing to uh, the ministering is a totally different thing, and it comes with a lot of challenges. Of course, the way we know the situation in our country, uh, the welfare of the players have to be taken care of, uh, and you know, challenges left, right, and centre. So it it takes you into into some responsibility, you have to take the responsibility and uh, I'm so happy that uh, behind me we have an able team that have been, has been really uh, working so hard to make sure that uh, we share the ideas, we come up with the programs and also how can we make the welfare of the players uh, maybe to be, uh, to be okay and uh, you know uh, with, uh, with also the other football stakeholders uh, we believe uh, we can do something. So it has been um, a tough journey and of course uh, coming back again uh, the second time into the office uh, it gives us uh, more challenge it's challenge uh, it's a challenge to us to make sure that uh, we have to do more uh, to make sure that uh, the welfare of the players are uh, are looked into so for us uh, of course we have the the aims and visions and we believe that uh, having the second term uh, we have the trust from the players uh, from the members i can say uh, to work for them and maybe to fight for their for their rights how has it been like in terms of you know pushing for their uh, welfare and you know it's a huge group of players both former current and even the promising ones and considering that you've been elected and opposed in this morning's elections what does that insinuate is it uh, because of your track record your scorecard has been decent of course, that is trust from the players, what we have done for them and uh, maybe what we are looking forward to do. Because as I said, you know, um, looking after the players, 4,000 plus members uh, with a league that doesn't have a sponsorship, you know, that's a big challenge because their welfare is somehow neglected. And, uh, you know, it gives us another opportunity, maybe how can we help these players, you know. So we come up with the other tailor, make, we tailor make other programs to make sure that they suit the players, they can do. Like maybe uh, those who want to go back to school, uh, they can go back to school. We have uh, taken through uh, some of the players that have uh, uh, taken that, that, that path of maybe going back to coaching. 
we have we have done that uh, we have uh, also uh, we have done uh, some of the partnership with uh, some of the schools like Zitek University whereby we have our members almost 50 players maybe um, are doing some learning there so we we see how can we help these players because we don't have money in the league and also when we represent them in legal issues uh, some of the issues can take up to maybe one two three years so what happens to the player so we come up with other plans to make sure that um, while the cases the, the cases are going on so what the, what can they do and the learning is bankrolled by k4 of course we have a partnership with the with the zitec university a 50 50 uh, uh, share so for us uh, maybe we come in uh, maybe that's the aspect where ateri comes in uh, maybe marketing communication so uh, if a player can maybe let's say you pay 30000 per per semester so you, you have to part with 50 uh, 15000 and maybe the rest of the 15000 uh, it's paid up by the by the school so that's where we come in Good stuff. Terry, I have worked with you. Your work ethic, your work spirit speaks for itself. And uh, now, you know that gender parity, you know, Kenyans love making noise when they see uh, Wasike, Situma, and there is no lady in between. I think they will <laughs> say, you know, gender is not being factored in. In your own perspective, probably women's welfare and football will get to move to another level as well. Yeah, and it's not just gender parity because it is uh, one of the policies it's marriage you see it's sometimes uh, women in positions like this you get to uh, people make you feel like you, they're doing you a favor it's not a favor we are qualified and re we've been doing the job over the years so that is why even at Kefa we have so many women who are working with us because we believe that they have the potential to do it. It's not just about maybe gender balance or anything. It's getting the best people who can do the work for the players. So for me, I feel like it's been, we've been here for years actually, in and out. Like you say, we've worked together. We've worked uh, on different platforms. But it is just the fact that we are not, sometimes we are together, but we're not together. Yes. So as players or even former players, there's, I always say it is powerful if we work together as a collective in one voice I, instead of Situma just making noise on, on his own. He's also working in isolation somewhere else. But if we come together and actually champion for a cause collectively, then it has an impact and it can push the policymakers to make the necessary changes. Like now we're struggling with uh, things like safeguarding in the I'll talk about the women's side mostly because I've not had any uh, male players saying that they're being abused. But it is something that is chronic now. Why? Because there are no uh, safeguarding policies or even if they're there, no one is implementing them. So such like things are the things that we need to champion for and advocate for, for their implementation, not just having them on paper. We go and launch all the safeguarding policies. We launch the much fixing integrity forms, but who is actually following up and making sure that these things are being implemented? Because otherwise, the environment will still not be safe for the players. And football is work. It's not just enjoyment or passion. It is work. For some people, they wake up in the morning and that is, is their job. They look at their nutrition, they, look, they go to the physio, that is expense. It's not part-time for them. It yeah, is it is full-time. Their daily commitment. Exactly. So in as much as we're preparing them for transition or maybe life after football, we need to secure their now because it is their work. So if we say we will just be advocating for, oh, do coaching courses, some of them do not want to do the coaching courses. Some of them do not want to go to school. They just want to focus on football as a career fast now and get paid. So I think if we try and push for what we've been singing, standard contracts and all that, now that we want to work together with the Federation as well and see how that can be done and also just uh, have a voice and probably the club licensing thing, have the clubs also do the resource mobilization so that they can sustain the players. And uh, uh, James, I have seen, I think you, in your company, you got a gentleman from Fifth Pro, which means your activities are well sanctioned in compliance with the international guidelines. How is it like, you know, working with with them? Uh, are they based in Geneva? 
Zurich Netherlands Netherlands yeah how is it how is it like how has it been like and what do they make of you know Kenyan footballing scene of course we are under fifth pro and uh, we are under always under their guidelines and uh, you know they they are so professional and they believe in professionalism yes. and that's why they're here and they believe in integrity and uh, you know fairness and uh, that's why they we have the representative from fifth pro to come and make sure that also they they oversee the the process because uh, they have really really supported us just uh, to meet merit and stuff yeah of course of course because uh, they have really helped us and they have really given us uh, uh, support to make sure that our activities goes on or to make sure that uh, we champion for the welfare of the players because also their main work is maybe to see their main work is to see the welfare of the players both men and women are looked into and uh, you know um, we have never gone wrong under them and uh, we we still um, appreciate their uh, their guidance uh, their support and uh, also um, their presence in the country. So also I'll say maybe I acknowledge the way uh, Terry has said, uh, the good thing at the moment is that we have a goodwill from the Federation, Kenya Federation, and uh, we also want to appreciate them a lot because they really uh, flagged off the, the process of, uh, of, of electoral Congress because initially before we had, uh, of course, the noise, we haven't done the election and blah, blah, but I think uh, at the moment, we have a goodwill, and we have sat a couple of times, maybe when we play, and make sure that uh, to see how can we come together, uh, Kenya Footballers Welfare Association, the Kenya Federation, uh, to make sure that the players are well taken looked uh, well taken up. Because uh, you know, in between, you have the players. Without the players, we don't have the organization. We have that is the most important. Exactly. Person. Without the the clubs or the players, we don't have the the football federation. So I think the key person here is the player and. The good thing is that they, they have shown the goodwill, and for us, we are we are open-minded. We are hundred percent um, under their guidance. Also, they will we, they will they will they will show us how they want things to be run, and also we'll, we are ready to share the ideas because we have a couple of things that we need to share with the with the FA uh, concerning the, the the players. So uh, that maybe is for another time, but uh, at the moment, I just want to say that uh, we have now good blood, and uh, they have really supported us throughout the process. We have finished the process uh, smoothly, and uh, we feel now uh, we can champion for the for the for the welfare of the players. Terry, I got a friend of mine who keeps telling me that you know. The problem with Kenyan sporting administrators is that, you know, whenever they visit overseas, they never take benchmarking notes that, you know, they will come back in the country and want them injected into our running of the game. You are widely traveled yourself, having been in CAF, uh, organization of women football, and uh, I've seen you attending training symposiums and matches. How, how, how can we get to incorporate what you you learn overseas so that it can be factored into our administration and what KEFA is also doing to advocate for the interest of uh, our players. Yeah, um, it, it can work and maybe it cannot because, you see, if you contextualize the African um, sport or maybe football, yes. it is totally different from what happens in Europe. Because you can't just say you go and watch a UEFA Champions League final and say, oh, we want to do the same thing in Kenya or maybe in Egypt. It depends with also our context. What is happening in your country? How can you uh, like incorporate whatever you've learned and whatever is happening on ground, mm -hmm. like we, we normally say? Because sometimes it is okay to go and learn and, and, and watch, but do you have the facility, do you have mm -hmm. the expertise, do you have the right people to implement or maybe even... Um, so it boils down to several factors. Yeah, several factors and that's why training and learning is important. In as much as we want to be the best, what are we doing in terms of capacity building, in terms of just ensuring that our uh, facilities up to standards like now we uh, have problems of stadiums not being up to standards yes. and stuff like that. So probably we can't even host any uh, tournament or something. So these are things you can't just copy. It also depends what are you doing in your own space and what is your context? What, what are your cultures? What can you borrow and what can you not borrow? So I think it is just a matter of learning and unlearning maybe the things we normalize in this country. like. Mm, making it normal to play in bad pitches, for instance, 
which is something that should be, I think if you start by professionalizing the, the, the game, it means we have the right equipment, we have the right uh, pitches, we have the right, we are being paid allowances because no one will go and enjoy the game if they are not enjoying uh, the work they are doing. Jamo, I think you've been in the game for a while and Terry is speaking about a very paramount point of you know, facilities, uh, welfare, uh, ensuring that facilitation of the players is something that is being factored. I know we got a few minutes before we wind up this segment because it was a short notice, but it is something we we'll do comprehensively going forward. Talk to us about, you know, how you seek working with the government of the day. We've seen Talanta Hela getting launched yesterday. Ababu Namwamba has looked promising from the first days of his stint and President Ruth also yesterday spoke passionately about football and how to restore the lost glory and we've seen Kenya bidding for 2027 AFCON with other East African countries. How is that manager but someone who's played for top local sides, you know, featured overseas slightly, played for the national team Arambe Stars, how can we execute and ensure that this comes to pass? Of course, uh, we always have uh, good ideas, um, tangible ideas, but again, uh, the only undoing is that the process, whereby uh, the process between uh, maybe um, um, digesting the ideas, um, putting them on paper, and maybe coming up the way you can implement those ideas, that's the only challenge we have because the ideas we have, but at times we take more shortcuts than the long cut because it needs, it's a process, you know. You have to take step one. We want to one. implement it swiftly. Exactly. You have to take step one, step two, step three, and it takes time, you know. It's a process. So uh, what I can say is that, uh, you know, football, it has its own guidelines. And as I can say, like the FA, the Federation, you know, we have the we have the guidelines of, uh, let's say, club licensing. You yes. know? It's something that uh, the FA can look into the in position in a better position to make sure that it's implemented in our, in our country and also uh, like from our side we will try our level best to see like maybe we look into the issues of standardized contracts we have the CBS we have also the NDRCs you know, so those are the I can say the four or five major major points that uh, at the moment you want to look into uh, between the Kenya Football Welfare Association and the, and the FA if we can have maybe two three working then we can start from there and make sure that the welfare of the players are looked into. Terry, your final submissions regarding the state of the game and what you seek to do to ensure that our football gets to another level. I've seen, I think, a communique from Football Kenya Federation regarding our team around the starlets, you know, hitting the camp in preparation. Oh, the under 18. Of, yes, the under 18. Yeah, um, just looking forward to it because last year we were in the cold. You remember, <laughs> so, yeah. I'm looking forward for that first um, international match, whether it's under 18. I, I also know Viga Queens will be representing us in the regional Sekafa uh, for the Champions League. So yeah, um, just looking forward to it because you see the game has grown, right? Yes. Even the level of football right now, it's up there and we have so many players um, going pro, which is a bad thing because we need to have the money here to pay them. But yes, um, I'm looking forward to it. Jemo, mm -hmm. your parting shot, splinter groups, as far as, you know, bodies to represent players, how are you going to work to consolidate the same into one? Uh, for, for us, as uh, Kenya Footballers Welfare Association, we are always open-minded. And we believe if you have any idea that can uh, champion for the welfare of the players, you are welcomed. We come to share ideas. We believe football, we need everyone on board, you know. Uh, we can disagree to agree. So I believe uh, if we can be all in one basket, we can champion for the welfare of the players. So we welcome anyone. We can give us guidance. We believe that uh, with more knowledge, we can move this football to the next level. Robust duo of James Ituma alongside Terry Uko, Kenya Footballers Welfare Association President and his Vice Chairperson respectively joining us this particular afternoon to share their insights regarding what they are doing and what they continue doing to ensure that the better lives of our footballers and calling upon others to join hands to ensure that you know this comes to pass of course it's been on a short notice but I think it's something that we're going to be discussing and talking about as our uh, program uh, proceeds to another level. I think Beatrice had, was suggesting our producer that we need to introduce a segment where someone is coming to talk about you know, the welfare of women in sports and Terry Oko is here. I think probably after this you can uh, share and talk or 
side bar. Anyway, it's the touchline, the show still progresses and don't go away, stay tuned. Remember tonight in Istanbul, it's Mount Watson Clash beating Inter Milan and City in Champions League finale. Where is your money? Keep talking to us. Don't go away, stay tuned.